So we just got a massive update on the Bethesda Microsoft deal. In this video, what I'm going to do is recap this recent news. And more importantly, if you've even heard some of this news or seen some of those posts on Twitter or forums, go over what exactly this means and what could be happening next around this. But just to jump straight into this, although we don't technically have an official confirmation, like a tweet or message from Microsoft or Bethesda, a ton of details have just come out today or in the last 24 hours, making it seem like the Microsoft Bethesda deal either just closed or is extremely close to closing, as in it has been approved and closed already and perhaps the public announcement just wasn't made mid to late day on a Friday, or perhaps is going to happen in the next couple of days. So March 5th was always an important date because we've heard for a while now how on March 5th the EU would make a decision one way or another on the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition, as well as some of the antitrust aspects of that. As many of these organizational bodies, such as the EU or even the FTC in the US, needs to actually be like, okay, you're not creating a monopoly, you're not doing anything antitrust based, such as violating any of the existing antitrust laws, and actually approve an acquisition of this size. And although we did have that date of March 5th for the EU, we didn't really hear much about the US side of things, except late yesterday we saw this S 4 form from the US Securities and Exchange Commission. And a lot of people are getting confused as to what this actually is, but basically, this Form S4 has to deal with the Rule 145. This being a rule because Microsoft's publicly traded, this information has to be out for investors, and basically it requires Microsoft to report around persons who are offered securities in business combination, such as mergers or acquisitions. So if Microsoft is going to offer a company or a person a type of stock or other type of security, they will have to actually report that, and that's what this is concerning. This is technically from a couple of days ago, although this form was made aware of earlier today, late yesterday. The dates on many of these are for both March 1st and March 2nd. So people thinking this technically means the merger between Microsoft and Bethesda is finalized and the SEC approved it? No, this is in no way saying that. But what it is confirming is the registration of those shares that will be used potentially as a payment in this merger acquisition. So we've heard numerous times how it's the biggest gaming deal ever, it's $7.5 billion. But in reality, it's likely not $7.5 billion, but it might be, let's say, $3 billion and $4.5 billion worth of stock. These are the stock that are going to be given to those shareholders of Bethesda slash Zenimax, or they could be. Technically, they could be for something totally unrelated, but I think we have our answer. Although there's been a hyper focus on this particular message, there actually is quite a bit more information out there that I think is even more more impactful is around Providence Equity, which is probably a name that you're familiar with or have heard of in the past in regards to Bethesda. Providence, to make it simple, invests in companies, one of which was Zenimax slash Bethesda. They initially invested $300 million into them in 2007, which of course was quite early on for Bethesda, and a subsequent $150 million in 2010. And based on these numbers, as well as the most recent $7.5 billion valuation in 2020, it definitely seems like they owned a significant chunk of the company, although exact percentages aren't known. And this being even more relevant as in 2016, we did see how they were perhaps interested in selling their share or even IPOing Zenimax overall. If they had the power to IPO Zenimax, it means they held a pretty significant portion of the company. And after this, we saw that commitment to repeatable revenue, Creation Club, of Fallout First and of course Fallout 76. The big news being that Zenimax slash Bethesda is no longer listed on their website as an active investment. And even more damning, it's now listed as a realized investment on their website. If you're not familiar with this terminology realized, basically let's say you buy a stock of a company, then you say, oh no, the stock price is changing. You lose $50, you gain $100. That is your unrealized profit or loss. You don't actually realize that until you sell it and then it'll be realized profit or loss. And basically what it seems like this means is Providence Equity realized their profit in Zenimax. They sold all of the common stock they owned in Zenimax for likely a giant close to billion dollar profit overall. And when we look back at those forms filed earlier with the US SEC, it's likely in relation to this, actually giving Providence Equity shares of Microsoft as compensation, which then they could liquidate, hold on to, etc. And just a little bit of further icing on the cake, all of this found by Timor222 on Twitter, the chief investment officer at Providence is no longer a board member at Zenimax. It quite literally says he was previously a board member at those companies. 
So to make this somewhat long story short, basically what this all means is, in regards to the Bethesda Microsoft purchase, people are starting to get paid. Now everyone may not have been paid thus far, the deal overall may not be totally closed, but it one, certainly seems like it was largely approved if Microsoft is cutting those checks to some of the ZeniMax shareholders. And really this whole process may take some time. We may see a brief announcement from Microsoft or Bethesda imminently. Now at the time of recording this, since it's late on Friday, it seems extremely unlikely. It'd be kind of weird news to announce late p.m. on a Friday just before the weekend, and there's almost certainly going to be some kind of announcements made around this. I don't think a lot of people understood that this whole time, since September when this deal was announced until today, when seemingly some of this deal is starting to get finalized or people are starting to get paid out from this deal, Microsoft couldn't influence Bethesda. It's not like they could just start making decisions around the company or start working together if they otherwise wouldn't. They were still operating and functionally two totally separate companies. So after this deal is finalized, they could finally start doing things, but the key word there is start doing things. They're going to have to actually introduce the entire Bethesda staff to the Microsoft family. And it seems like this may have been starting at least at an executive level yesterday. As we see Brad Sams on Twitter saying, there are a bunch of meetings about it internally yesterday. This in regards to the ZeniMax Microsoft EU ruling and the acquisition overall. I wouldn't be shocked if imminently we do see some kind of just announcement, even if it's as simple as a tweet or a press release on their investor relations website, that the deal is in fact finalized, perhaps in the first couple of days of next week. And then over the next couple of weeks, we may see some genuine changes coming, or at least some plans or predictions for those changes. One of the easiest things they can do very quickly is bring the entire Bethesda library to Game Pass. All of the Bethesda games, all of their DLCs just getting added immediately. And who knows, maybe even things like unreleased games, those PlayStation exclusives that are coming to PC with Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo could be available day one for Game Pass on PC only since they're not coming to Xbox for the first year. Or even some answers as to the exclusivity argument, Microsoft making decisions or announcements about their plans. Late last year, the head of Xbox did say, I want people to know I'm not sitting down with Todd Howard and Robert Altman and planning their future because I'm currently not allowed to do that. That would be illegal. Your question is completely inbound, but I get a lot of the questions right now. Is this game exclusive? Is this game exclusive? And right now, that is not my job in regards to ZeniMax. My job is not to sit down and go through their portfolio and dictate what happens. But now, that isn't the case anymore. He actually can talk about things, and again, likely many of these meetings will occur over the next week, so I wouldn't be shocked if in the next couple of weeks we start getting major news and details. Either way, what is the takeaway from this all? It's that big things are happening. The Providence Equity news in particular seems to almost have jumped the gun a little bit, so we might be early hours still, but over the next couple of weeks, I would expect some updates around Bethesda and Microsoft and perhaps even the future of Bethesda. But again, temper your expectations as far as the weekends go. I'm sure a lot of this still has to be hashed out and discussed, so I don't think we're going to be getting a giant Starfield trailer on Monday or anything, just due to the timeline and how these things are working out. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This is definitely big and exciting news, and likely the first piece of a wave of news we'll be getting over the course of March. As always again, I thank you all for watching, and that I hope to see you all next time. Later.